from these guys. But now it's going to be nice to go back to my roots. And uh, get into Fitas and Sporting, which is what I know. So I've sent the request. It's just got to accept that request, Phil. How are you, mate? How we doing? Ah, long time no see. How's lockdown treating you? Long, as you can, uh, <laughs> as you can tell. Like mine. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to shave mine off, though, in case it don't come back. Yeah, I, got, um, I was a little bit worried, but um, look, I think what we've just seen from Boris, it's going to be July before we even think about it. Uh, as, as we've all seen on Facebook, there's people itching to uh, itching to get back at the clays, but. Uh, like I, uh, I made a comment the other day. Um, I think morally, there's people dying and people are worried yeah, about going huge. to shoot a few plates. It's huge, it is. Um, but I also do know it's, it's so difficult, isn't it? Because there's like, you know, people are not earning a living. There's people, it's going to be a very worrying time now. Like he's just said that the people of the shooting trade are not going to earn a penny for another eight weeks. Exactly. People, people like yourself. And others that are full-time coaches, it's obviously affecting... Yeah, I mean, like I say, I'm, I'm super lucky that we've got the company um, that, that that helps me. But like, you know, Steve Lovett said, he's not earned a penny for seven weeks. And now it's going to be another eight before. And that's, and like, you, get, you know, that's all conditional. But look, we can talk about that. I've not got you on here to talk about that. I've brought you on here because of what you've done in the sport, what you do for the sport. And try and pass some of your knowledge on to the people watching. And we can... Uh, we can all argue about Boris Johnson. I wouldn't want his job, and I'm sure he doesn't want mine. So we're not going to worry about that. So look, mate, I know all about you. I've been good friends with you for years, but talk us through your career, mate. So, you know, I, I watched you win bronze at the World Fit Ass and walk the shoot off with you. What else What else are your, or top, your top three in your career, mate? Uh, definitely, yeah, bronze at the World Fit Ass. That's the... Uh, that was the pinnacle. In our disciplines, the World Fit Ass is the pinnacle. It's the Olympics. If you win the World yeah. Fit Ass, that is the yeah. one to win. Yeah. Um, last year, I was lucky enough to win the Beretta World. Yeah. I look at that because up till this year, I was sponsored by Beretta for the last 15 years. So I guess it was something I always wanted to win and come so close and yeah, never yeah. done it. Um, I think I think the, the medal that means the most is probably the bronze at the world sporting at churchill's in 2015 or six, 16 was that when anthony um, won yeah uh do you know what and it was simply because i grew up idolizing yourself george and richard and i got to share the final with richard and was neck and neck with Richard all the way through yeah 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 and me and me and Richard were tied going to the last eight targets for the bronze medal, and I managed to beat him by one. And I think that kind of stands out the most as a guy that I watched in many world sporting finals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there I was competing with a guy that was an idol as a junior. I think it was. Um, we had Marco the skier on the other night, and something he said to me, right, you know, was so true. That he said, like, you have role models until you beat them, and then they're not. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like you you tick Richard off, you tick me off, you tick George off, and you just kept picking people off. And now you're ranked up there, you know, everywhere you go, you're a threat to to everybody else. And I think it is. It's just ticking those names off, isn't it, and moving forward. It is, yeah, definitely. But yeah, that I think that definitely stands out as as the most, um, or being in the final at the Nad Al Sheba and, and winning thirty thousand dollars. That yeah, kind of yeah that that that, 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 that that always helps. I'd rather I'd rather win fifty grand and come tenth. Um what um talk us through so I know you're gonna have a big equipment change this year. I am uh, if we ever get to use it. So like I just said I was with I was with Beretta for fifteen years. I had a year off. I come to Krieg off when I was I was lucky enough to gain a Krieg off scholarship when I was 16 um but i just I, I just couldn't i just couldn't shoot it it was simple as that whether i was too young to learn how to shoot it yeah yeah um there was nothing nothing wrong with the gun i loved it and do you know what i picked that gun up and every time i picked it up i thought i'd shoot 100 straight but yeah, i just yeah. couldn't shoot it um, well, yeah, but, I, but i also think your career states that you made the right choice back then too yeah you know so I, I 
I've made the choice to to give back actually a sponsorship that I always wanted. Yeah, 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 makes sense. Um, uh, but I, this year, well, last year, I was lucky enough to be offered a factory sponsorship with Prancy. Um Still waiting for the gun. Um, <laughs> Lockdown's the gun, a killer, eh? The gun's made. I waited, <laughs> waited five months for the gun to be made. I've been quite uh, specific with the barrels and different things. And uh, the gun was made. I was actually could have gone to Italy to have my stock made in January, but I was away. Um, and then we had a trip planned and lockdown happened. So, uh, which, um, which oh, Pratsy have you gone for, mate? I've gone for a high tech, yeah, um, 32 inch. Um, with I've gone with a high tech, but with a normal tapered rib instead of the raised rib, the reverse yeah, tapered. Yeah. Um, I've had quite light barrels for high techs as they come quite heavy. Um, and a light mono block as I do shoot quite a light gun, so that is why it took five months to make because I couldn't have one that was sort of sitting on the shelf. And I've uh, I've had a colour scheme that will uh, will shock people. When it, uh, <laughs> when it turns up. What um, what weight barrels did you go for? Well, my Bretter is fifteen thirty. Yeah, so it is very light. Uh, they I don't think they could get it that light, so I think they've come at. 1565 okay um but obviously 35 grams yeah is, you could could lose that on a different watch yeah you say you're not going to worry about so um if you put too, if you put too much air gel no. in you'll get 35 grams um exactly what um you got yeah, multi-choke so, or fixed choke fixed choke um i do shoot quite tight chokes as you know yeah so i've gone for two eights which are three quarter three quarter um i've always shot three quarter three quarter through all my brettas and it's simply because i just can't be dealing with the the twiddling of chokes and having it in my head of what choke can kill this and if i change choke and then miss the first target out i, I am quite the person to think have i made the wrong decision yeah, yeah, here yeah, yeah, yeah. straight away and then that's in my head so i know simplistic as much as we as much as maybe I'm at a bit of a disadvantage at close range, I'm not at much of a disadvantage, but I know I can kill anything from 10 foot away to 60 yards. And Over because over, over the over the lockdown period, I've been watching all the YouTube videos and all the the um, the uh, people doing interviews. I watched, I actually sat and watched George's interviews last night. Yeah, I've watched them. In between falling asleep, um, the parts that I did wake up to and listen was uh, he said he's got another set of barrels that he's actually going to shoot a lot more open choke. Yeah, I did see that, yeah. But he's tried that. He actually tried that before. That'll be interesting to see. be interesting to see actually how that goes because that goes against the grain of everything he's ever said. Yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, I, I do... I remember in Italy yeah. where, where it was the scorching heat. Yeah, yeah, Arezzo, Arezzo. Yeah, Arezzo. I I followed George. He was actually on the squad in front of me, and uh, Kate actually was carrying his spare barrels then for him round. So I don't actually know if he has had it before. Yeah, he did. He, did. he had it. I was. That, that's when me and him used to talk, and um, he actually beat me by one there. But he, uh, yeah, he ran. He, he was. He's gone back to running these two barrels. But hey, it'd be interesting to see how he gets on with them. I'm all for evolving. If anybody can learn anything, let's let's learn something. What? Uh, yeah. I'm yeah, we'll see. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting it. And actually, uh, what sh what, what shells are you going to run through it? Uh, I'm still with Ely. Yeah. Um, I made a change from Hull four years ago, so uh, I'll still be running the Ely VIP Trap Seven and a Halves with uh, the occasional um, Federation Six and six, a Half. Yeah, just I, do you know I used to shoot a lot of eights through my DT10. Yeah. Uh, when, I, when I shot Hull, I shot Sovereign 8s through my DT10, and they were savage. And when I first moved to Ely, I tried the VIP 8s through my 692, and I just couldn't get any decent kills with them. And I changed the 7.5s, and, and it was just drastic. But it, they just don't pattern with my gun. They're not the shells. I've shot with Chris Broomfield, who yeah, shoots VIP that's what I, And I say this all along. As good as mine. People say to me, like, oh, should I shoot the same shell? I say, we need to actually work out what's going to rip 
best through yours. Like I can take three of my Kriegoffs, the same choke, the same bore diameter, and just need to shoot different shells. Do you know what? Like I've watched you shoot thousands. I've watched George shoot thousands. I've I've seen Mark shoot, and all your game balls hit hard. Now, but we all shoot I, different ones. If I shoot um, a black gold eight, I've tried them. I get good kills. If I try, if I shoot dark storms through my gun, I don't seem to get yeah, good kills. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree, mate. I think you've got to research and in, so like, like when, in practice, I don't believe it matters. You, you all you got to do because. Whether they break or not, you're just working timing. But when you put a shell in that's going to be at a target that means something, you've got to know it's going to break and you've got to understand that it's going to break. 100%, yeah. You know, you, you've and, got to have full, full confidence in that shell. Yeah, definitely. And then, then VIP seven and a half. So I know that I would shoot them at anything, a bar a long rabbit or... Or something edgy something, or... Something that's edgy yeah, and slow. Yeah. But, and that's... That's the only way. I just shoot one shell. And to be honest with you, last year, um, I I can't remember how many I had shells wise, but I only actually ordered five hundred six and a half. And I actually think I've still got four hundred. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon. I always order five hundred six and a half at the beginning of the season. And I, and I tell you what, I've I've probably got two thousand now because the five hundreds just keep yeah, yeah stacking up until you go and whack them on a few pigeons and get rid of them. I was going to say, I end up shooting mine on pigeons. Yeah. I, don't, <laughs> just I just get, don't use them. Just to get rid of some. Um, we've had a few questions come in. Um, I'll rattle through and make you... Uh, people want to know about you, not me. Um, you've got a very unorthodox style with your arm positioning and, and your gun mount. How did it evolve with it being low in the pocket? Uh, do you know what? It's actually something I can't answer. <laughs> I have no clue where it comes from. <laughs> Um, it's not as bad as what it used to be. Um, my stock on my guns now are always dead parallel, so that does bring the stock back up, yeah, yeah, yeah. up a little bit, but it does. And do you know what? The only thing I can think it may have come from is shooting fit as a youngster and trying to get the gun quickly yeah, into yeah, my yeah. shoulder to make a crooked dot and not making a correct mount. Um, I don't recommend it for anyone because it, it is actually quite a bad mount. Yeah, but, but I think. But if you look at if you look at me, you, Corey, we're all the same. We're all low in the pocket. But one thing I can tell you yeah. is, from my experiences as well, the only way you can hold that gun low in that pocket is to be in the gym. If you're not in the gym and you've not got the muscle around the inner shoulders, the delts to hold it, it don't work. No, no, definitely. But yeah, I, I definitely if. I don't do as much coaching as you and a few others, but I do a bit, and I would never, ever try to get one of my students to mount a gun. Yeah, yeah. No, I think everyone, everyone definitely it not. Just but it just happened. Yeah, it just evolved over time. But yeah, it's and, not it's not held you back, so... No, and the arm... Um, I don't actually know where the arm comes. I do actually have quite a bad shoulder um, from Jim. I've, I've torn um, my front delt clean off like 90 percent of it off and when i was younger i did have it sorted out and i don't know if that is a little yeah, bit just, of it just comes up, it's bound to because whenever you have a shoulder injury it's going to shorten the muscle when they reattach so there's going to be a twinge in there but hey it suits you perfectly because you're one of the only shooters i know that's to go down from their fit ass line to their mount exactly, so, yeah, so all you have to do is put your head down and you're already there um exactly. people want to know what techniques you shoot phil what what's your go-to techniques do you mix and match do you I know you chop a lot of shit off. I, as you call the slice, yeah. I I do slice a lot. I do, yeah. Um, I I won't shoot too much swing through. I'm not a massive fan. Uh, it just doesn't work for me. Yeah. Uh, quartering targets. Uh, I will I will slice a quartering target. Any quartering, any crosser that's slightly. Quartering, I will slice. I will just slice into a gap. Yeah, yeah. just from slightly underneath and come into my lead. Um, the only target I will shoot swing through is a driven. You have to. Yeah, you got no choice. Um, and probably I shoot swing through on my bogey bird, which is a teal, which has got a right to left slant. On okay. It. If it had a left to right slant on it, I would just yeah, because you, your eyes are the right side of the barrel. Yeah. But obviously, I can't see over the stock, so I swing through a uh, a till from right to left. So that probably is why it is my bogey bird because I don't shoot too much swing through. But then I class myself 
as a great driven shot. I very rarely miss driven, and I have to swing through them. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, um, it's horses for courses, isn't it? It's learning, and I think that's what's quite important of any coach and any competitor is you've got to find out what's best for you. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's not and, what's best for me, and when I'm no. teaching my students, it's what's best for them, and that's yeah, that's definitely. what's important. That you know, you've spent years becoming the shooter that Phil Gray is now. And I bet you've tried chopping off the right to left heel. You've tried maintain leading it, and you've yeah. found out that the and that's how it works. You you evolve through time. Um, is interesting. I, I take. I, 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 I would change to shoot a bit of pull away on on stuff that doesn't need a lot of lead because I was, there was times when I would shoot in front yeah, yeah. of of little crosses and floppy targets. That don't take much, and now I'll just pull off them and Let just rip. squeeze the trigger on its nose, just to just to stop me having a maintained gap into it. It's it's but quite I interesting. Of all the people I've interviewed and all the people that I've spoke to at the top end, swing through and light barrels don't go together. Exactly. I think that's why I can. That's why I can get away with shooting light barrels because my gun doesn't really move too yeah. much. It yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I don't. I'm not a shooter that holds out for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't move too much. That's why I think that's why I get away with light barrels. And but, I love to be able to... And because I chop things off, having light barrels just enables me to be able to quickly remove the end of them barrels to the point. Wherever you need to be. Yeah. What? Um, so it's been interesting. Like I've, I've, I've known you, what, fucking money's going on 20 years now, I guess, something like that. Um, and it's interesting to see you as evolve. And like I said, I walked... I walked the final shoot off with you against Andras at the world, and well, I didn't do anything. I just left you to it. But it was just interesting to see you evolve and your mental game. When I watch you shoot now, even though you won that shoot off, you're far stronger mentally now than then. Yeah, um, I think it's like anything. I think you learn how to win a shoot and close a shoot out. Yeah, and that's what I want to get into. How, what have you? What have you learned? What What's changed? Because um, if I give it from you know my what? perspective, I watched you shoot that shoot off, and I, I only said one thing to you during that shoot off. And I, 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 do you know what? I was just about to bring it up, and I bet I know what it is. You said to me, Andras is going to shoot everything rapid, quick. Do not get into who's got the biggest. Yeah, hit. yeah. Just don't get into a race. Settle, and you, and you smash that shoot off. You, you, you know, I, as we, I think, because we walked from one to two, I said to you, just hold on to that second barrel. You're letting it go too quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from then, you've become that person that can go and do what I did to you and go and mentor somebody else. But what I'm interested in is, is the steps of understanding that you've got the ability to win and building in the mental cycle that's going to allow you to win. What was the evolving? When did you realise there was a weakness? And when? what did you do to put the steps into place that made you be able to close out the Bretter world, be able to get rid of Richard in that final? Um. Uh, that World Fit Ass was my first major medal yeah. as a senior. Um, and I I should think that I realised at that point, that's actually a lie. Um, the, re the time I realised that I could close a shootout is um, when I, I won the Masters, yes, it's Masters, when I was 19. Yeah. Um, I think I still hold the highest score, 195. And the following year, I went back and I tied George on one, 189 or 190. And Mark Windsor ended up beating us by one. Anyway, I went back for a shoot-off with George. And I was 20 at the time. George, one of the greatest there is. It sort of... I'd never been in that situation. And I, I beat him. And I didn't just beat him. I, beat, I think I beat him by nine out of 50 and I think that was the time I realised you know what I'm good enough to beat the best in the world yeah yeah on my day if everything's right I can do it uh, so I guess that was probably the start of realising that I can close a shoot out um, up till then I guess there was always that doubt yeah yeah like, uh, well you don't know till you know do you I'd won pretty much everything as a junior um, and then coming into the seniors you don't know if you are good enough to to win. But there's a lot of juniors we all know that 
can dominate the juniors and they come into the seniors, and they find alcohol with yeah. or whatever or lose interest, or just generally don't have don't have the talent to beat the top shots. And I guess that was the first time I realised I was good enough to beat the best in the world. Um, and from then on, I I worked on my game of learning how to close a shootout. Um, I had a big mental big mental gap of not shooting 100 straight for a long time. I shot 27 19, 20, I think it's 27 99. And I've missed on my last stand three times. Um, I shot one at Northampton with you. I missed yeah, on my yeah. first stand. Uh, last year, I was lucky enough to finally shoot my first 100 straight. Um, and even then, on my last stand, you know, I'd shot 92 balls of smoke and my last eight targets more or less fell in half. <laughs> and, um, so I, I think I'm... I think I'm still learning. I'm still, I'm still young. I still. We're all gonna. You're, you're never gonna stop learning. But uh, no, it's, no. it's been interesting to see you grow as a shooter, though. Um, like I say, you, you, you're definitely one of those people that you look for on the scoreboard. Like you could do some damage every time. Like some people that think they're good shooters, but you don't even look for them. You know, like you're not even interested. Yeah. But um, there's a I question. Like, just, um, there's a question just popped up from Larry there. What did Phil think of the home international fit ass in Scotland? I think that's going to be a bit of a. It was obviously shit by the question. <laughs> so, uh, so. You know what? It, um, some of it. <laughs> some of it was brilliant. It there was a layout, and they called it. Uh, they called it Death Valley. Yeah, I know where it is on the corner. And do you know what? It's probably one of the best 25 pit hats I have ever shot. Um, and the rest of it... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> there was a... I'll put it to you. The... I don't want to say too much, but there was a... On one layout, there was a till. The trap was 70 yards away. It went away from you, and they could not have got that spring any tighter <laughs> if they tried. Well, it was some of it was brilliant, and some of it was wasn't a bit a bit much. <laughs> I mean, um, I actually I didn't actually tell anyone this, but two days going to it, um, I actually got a blurry right eye, and I I. I couldn't work out what it was and it started to go and it went um, on my drive down there. It come back and I actually shot that shoot. I could barely see. I could, I could almost not see the end of my barrel <laughs> and how I, I, I don't think one England member, I was, I was the highest England member. I, I shot 79. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, um, I think it was one on 83. And that was that was good. That was good shooting. It was. I don't know what to say about it. It was the hardest fit ass I've ever shot. Um, yeah, it was good in places and not so good in others. <laughs> Same question we've asked everybody. Um, your dream six man squad, including yourself. People to ask people not to include them. I want to be. I, I, I want to include them. So you can pick five others. Um, Richard, just because he was an idol. Yourself and George, just because you three were my idols growing up as a junior. Uh, Mike Wilgus, because I, I just absolutely love the guy. Yeah, great, 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 great guy. Simon. I actually spoke to him yesterday. And... Do you know what? Kevin Mayer. Yeah, yeah, great guy. He really was. And he's like, do you know what? I actually spoke about him the other day. And when I was younger, I sort of I watched him a lot. And Kevin is very, very steady. And I actually kind of I learned a little bit of Kev watching him. Yeah, that was a great shot. But yeah, I, do you know what? I'd actually bring Kev back to my to my dream squad. To be fair, he actually won the English or British Open the day after he knew and have chopped his finger off and pulled the trigger with the other finger. Yeah, down at Southern County, actually, this one was all bandaged up, and he was like this left-handed pulling the trigger. Um, yeah. what's your what's your goals in the sport now mate what, where, where is it going to take you um, I'm actually going to I'm actually going to start doing a lot more um, I took a back seat a little bit I've shot 100 claims since the British Open in September right um, I went to Bali for 
four or five weeks, and uh, I spent a bit of time in um, in Ibiza this summer uh, with my missus. So I did take a bit of a back step, uh, but towards the end of the season, I was shooting a lot more than what I have been for the last four or five years. Sort of back back to what I was when I was sort of coming out of my juniors and shooting quite a lot. And I did actually notice my scores going up towards the end of the year. I won the Brett World. I won the Pro One Challenge. I, you know, I started to shoot really nice. And I think at that stage, I thought I need to start shooting that bit more, but not just shooting for the sake of it. Yeah, I you, need to, you want to do it. You want to pull the trigger. I need, to, I need to want to do it. That's half the reason I had a change of gun, if I'm honest. I felt that it was time for a change um, to give me a bit of... Um, bit of spice in my yeah, yeah, in yeah. shooting and just spice things up a bit but last year i realized i, was, I need to do a little bit more but just more with more in like uh not just just going out and shooting practice or just shooting if i don't want to i just need to shoot for a reason and uh work on my weaknesses i, I do have them we all do yeah well, we'll be um, shooting tons won't we well how many shells uh, do you shoot a year now, what you could do, what you could do is completely lie, like everybody else has. You know, I think under ten thousand. You know, uh, lovely. Do you know what? Last year, I did, last year I shot about. I think last year I did only shoot about eight thousand. But usually, no, no, I'm not. I was not about, about you there. There's about twelve to fifth, twelve to fifteen thousand. Yeah. I think that's where every, I think that's where everybody is. Everyone's around the fifteenth. If you're going to be winning medals, I think it's got to be that. It's got to be that fifteen thousand. You've got to be. You've got to be up around that number to hold any kind of any kind of form that's going to that's going to carry you through. And it's not that you need to shoot the shells; it's that you need to create that memory that's going to carry you through day four of a world fit ass. That's what you're building up oh, to. You've got to have that memory where where it does rely on you. Um, favorite ground in the UK? Favorite ground abroad? Uh, favorite ground in the UK? Hodnet. Yeah, it's by far, isn't it? It's not, not even a clue. But then I do love Ch I do love Churchill's for the World Championship. But it's not the ground, is it? I love the I love the exactly. I love the where they hold it. But yeah, as a actual would, an open club, Hodnick kills it. Yeah, if you had to have the World Championship at at Churchill's without the land yeah, yeah, out yeah, back, yeah. it wouldn't be what it is. No. So yeah, Hodnick for yeah, and favorite in the world would be. Do you know what I'd say? Uh, what, what did we say that was in Italy? Arizona. Arezzo, yeah, that'd Arezzo. be one. That'd be, that'd be up there with me. That, that was a belting piece of land. That was. Yeah, well, that was pretty special. The weather weren't too nice, but I, I should say <laughs> it was boiling. That, was my, that, that would be my. That would have been my place to go. Or I did. I love the desert. Yeah, I did love it. But that, I think that was more the atmosphere and what it had. Yeah, the yeah, but, yeah, but I, I also everyone moaned about the background. I just see that as a challenge, you know. It, it, it was I thought, you know, you had to be on your. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about that where that that shoot was that wind. If you weren't on the right rotation, you were out of it. You were done. Do you know what people say to me? Uh, that um, there is no. It's no coincidence that five out of the six of us in the final shot the same rotation. Yeah, uh, Joey Bolton was the only person to shoot the opposite rotation. Yeah, I think I finished two. And, I finished two out of the final, and I was the same rotation as Joey. There was, and it was me that worked it out. There was five of you all shot the same time every day and had that wind. Yeah. Hey, look, it didn't make. It didn't um, make. People, it was still hard. It was still hard. It, it, you know. But the people that lost. The people that lost out there, there was certain certain shooters that saying they lost out in the final because the the wind blew when they shot layout four, which was the hardest. It was actually people who shot layout two, two which yeah. was the easiest. That's when I had it. But where we where I where I shot forty seven and and Derek shot forty eight and people were shooting thirty sixes yeah. and thirty seven, so we gained ten targets on them. On fifty, just done. And that was that that that's hard to pull back. Yeah, we're not going to pull it back. Not on a world class athlete. Um, right, that's my question. Has anybody got any questions for Phil? Does anybody got anything written down they'd like me to ask him before we wrap it up? Um, 
it's just going to be a weird season, mate. Isn't it? You've got to get that going, and um, I, I don't think yeah. I, don't, I don't think until we get to September we're going to we're going to shoot a competition bird. I really don't. I don't think there's going to be. Uh, well, I've I've said to, I've said to Prats, well, we've been speaking, and uh, the factory has reopened now, uh, taking visitors. But I mean, you uh, can't well, get there. I just can't get there. But at the same time, if I could get there, would I want to sit on a plane with five hundred people to Italy? <laughs> yeah, so we've kind of said that um, as much as I am itching to get it, it's um, it's not necessary at the minute because we're not actually shooting. Can they not? Can they not send you the gun with an adjustable stock to get you into the gun and then have a custom one done after? Do you know what? We did discuss it, and I could also send my stock out there and have it copied and, they, uh, and have it copied. Um, but there's actually a few things I would actually like to change my stock yeah, slightly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and at the minute, I'm thinking if I'm not shooting, I might as well just, just wait. Might yeah. as well just, yeah. even, even, if, even if you get it, you're not going to shoot it, are you? Exactly. And you know, as well as I do, if I have one stock and then I get used to that and have another stock, the balance is going to change yeah, yeah, slightly, yeah, yeah. or I'm going to have to add weight to it to get the balance the same. So it's still going to shoot slightly different. So I'm, I'm, I'm just going to wait. Just a quick question from Dave there, mate, on a pre shot routine. How do you occupy your mind? Um, feel like as I've got older, I'm actually quite good at blanking everything out and I don't have to do much to to fully concentrate my mind on what I'm doing. I I will put my cartridges facing the same way, but that's, that's sheerly just to slow myself down. Otherwise, I get a little bit quick. Um, my, fing uh, my fingers twitch quite a lot. I think if you ever watch me shoot, as I'm calling pull, my fingers on my forehead are always twitching just before I call pull. Um, but I don't have too much of a pre-shot pre -shoot routine. Um, I will think about... I will always think about my hold points and my kill points on my second target. Um, I actually tried your, your idea of um, loading the first cartridge and thinking about my first target. Um, just to see what it worked like, but I feel like with me, it just takes my mind away from things a little bit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Much. A pre-shot routine's got to be completely bespoke, and it, it all it all depends. Yeah. Like the pre-shot routine that I put online is nowhere near the pre-shot routine that I use because my mind's the same as yours. It works too fast. I've got to go, go, go. My pre-shot routine's under three seconds. I'm in and out. You know, when we shot that squad at Northampton, we probably shot our two pairs quicker than the other four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, it, I don't, I don't hang around, but I think that's that, that is why I do Twitter my culture a little bit, just to slow myself down a little bit. Otherwise, I would be flat too out too quick, and I probably would lose a few targets from it. But that's probably my only pre-shot routine is um is just slowing myself down with my cartridges. What's the difference between superbs and VIPs? Um, the wad is different. Uh, the, I believe. 99.9% sure they've got a slightly different powder. Um, they're, the Superbs are slower than the VIPs. Um, it, it, you're just finding, but again, it's what, you'll be, what people should be doing is buying a box of each, is what we said at the beginning, and finding what, what rips down their gun, you know what I mean? Do you know I mean? what? I, tr I tried the VIPs um, simply because at one stage, John Lee... Uh, when he was with Beretta, he was having troubles with his barrels, and he borrowed the barrels off my spare gun. And uh, I've got a, I've got a spare set of trap barrels that are full and super full, which I literally just leave for shooting pheasants. To be fair, um, I, that gun I probably in six years I've had it shot a thousand shells. I don't really <laughs> use it, uh, but John Lee borrowed my barrels, um, and he was shooting B I uh, no superb eights, and um, honestly that. People were asking him what he was using, like the kill. <laughs> never seen anything like it. And I'm me, I'm stood there thinking, hang on a minute, I may have found the answer. <laughs> straight away got the phone to Ely. I was like, send me some superb eights now, put them through my gun. Nothing, and I, everything broke into four bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's just, again, they didn't just didn't run through my gun. No, no and that is it. Everything in shooting should be personalised, bespoke, and trial and fail. That's all you can do. Um, 
But on the pre-shot routine, make sure everyone joins us tomorrow night. We've got Leslie Goddard in and Khalid. So it's going to be a belter. We've got lots of other things lined up for next week, another quiz and all kinds of stuff. So, mate, thank you very much. I know you're busy. I know you're still working. So uh, thank you very, very much for freeing up an hour of your time, mate. I appreciate it. Stay safe. Love to everybody else. And uh, I'll chat with you later on. You sure? We'll see you soon. You're a star, mate. Take it easy. Thank you, mate. Ta-da. So two big interviews there. Nice to get back to the sport that I know. Um, I'll speak with Vasily. We'll set him up again because we didn't even touch a quarter of that man's knowledge. I'm going to go and put my fat ass on the sofa and start making a plan for work. And um, I'll catch up with all of you tomorrow night from 7. It'll be a belting show tomorrow night. It's not really shooting base. It's all about pre-shot routine and the mental game. So stay safe and we'll chat tomorrow. <laughs>